beginner creators versus a master creator. What is the difference? In this audio, I'm going to share with you the most common mistakes I see in the manifestation community. These are often mistakes of perception, not action. So it's the way that this person is thinking about reality creation that's holding them back. It may be the person that's read all the books. They're very eager to create using the power of their mind, but they have a few misconceptions about how things work. And in this audio, we're going to break down some of those misconceptions. Now, as I go through this list, notice if any of these apply to you. And if you feel resistance to anything I'm saying, that's a clue and a half that there is something deeper there for you. So here are seven common mistakes of the beginner manifester. Number one, outsourcing all your knowledge to one teacher or one book. This is very limiting, but I see this all the time. For some people, it's Neville. They just read Neville Goddard and they refuse to pick up any other of the thousands of incredible books out there on the power of the mind. For others, it might be Abraham Hicks. They read Abraham, they listen to Esther Hicks, and they try to conform their whole life to what Abraham is teaching them. This is like trying to build a house with just a hammer. Just one tool. Now, a hammer is a great tool. It can do a lot of things. Can you build a house using just a hammer? Maybe, but it would be very, very inefficient. Start thinking of yourself as someone who has a wide variety of tools for all sorts of different situations. Not just one tool, not just one teacher or one method. Stay open-minded that there may be tools out there that have nothing to do with Neville or the Law of Assumption but that will serve you beautifully and really help you in life. I feel like so many times people are trying to box themselves into one specific method, and then they get frustrated that they can't use a hammer to solve all their challenges in life. Life is very varied, very multifaceted, very nuanced. It's not meant to be hammered away with one tool. Okay, cool, so you learned the law of assumption. Now you know how to master the entire universe. You realize that's not how that works, right? And if you feel resistance to what I'm saying here, I invite you to look at where that resistance is coming from. What are you hoping the law will solve for you? What is the magic pill that you're seeking here? The law is wonderful. Neville's teachings are incredible. But don't box yourself into one modality, one religion of thought, one way of going about things. Stay open-minded. Stay flowy. It would be like you learn how to walk and you say to yourself, I don't need to learn how to run. I already know the most efficient way. I can walk everywhere. Or you say, I don't need to know how to dance. That doesn't serve any useful purpose. It doesn't help me navigate. So I don't need to learn how to dance. I'm just going to stick to walking. Life is far more grand and beautiful when you learn different techniques, different ways of approaching life. Stay open-minded to new ways of thinking. Stay open-minded to the new and unexplored. Mistake number two, outsourcing your common sense and logic to an outside authority. This means that you're always looking for the answers outside of you. You're looking for someone to give you proof of something. You're looking for someone to give you a quote from Neville that will prove to you that something is real. You're looking on Reddit for someone else's experience to prove to you that something is possible. This is the opposite of being a powerful creator. A powerful creator creates. They don't go around seeking proof or validation or evidence. They just pick up their tools and get to work. They test the law for themselves. They apply it. They take action on it. They don't sit around waiting for someone to tell them something is possible. One of the biggest traps that I see in the manifestation community is asking the question, is it possible? I call it the is it possible trap. I'll get messages from people asking, is it possible for me to manifest this person? Is it possible for me to do this? One person asked me, is it possible to bring someone back from the dead? Well, regardless of whether I think it's possible or not, why don't you try it? 
Try using the law to do it and see what happens. Either you'll accomplish your goal or you'll fail. And either way, you'll learn something. Just try it. Why are you asking me? What do you think will happen if I somehow say to you, yes, it's 100% possible. You can absolutely manifest someone back from the dead. Okay, so I've said that. Now you're going to do the work? Now that some outside authority who you don't even personally know has told you it's possible, now you're going to apply the law? Or imagine I say, no, it's not possible. Okay, you're going to let someone else dictate to you what's possible for you? You see the dichotomy here? This is the opposite of being a powerful creator. A powerful creator doesn't wait around asking for permission of whether something's possible or not. They just go out and do it. They try it. They get up, they fall down, they fail, they succeed. They try it and they find out for sure for themselves what they're capable of. If you go to Nepal and you find some yogi in the mountains, you might be able to find someone who has incredible magical powers. Maybe they can teleport. Maybe they have telekinesis. Okay, so it's possible for the yogi. Does it mean it's possible for you? Maybe. Maybe not. It's completely your decision, your level of belief, your skills, your abilities. You see, it doesn't matter if the yogi can do something or not. What matters is, can you do it? Can you believe in it? Think of any famous person that you admire or that you respect for the craft and the work that they've put in. Think of your favorite singer. Can you imagine that person asking someone else, hey, do you think it's possible for me to have a wildly successful music career? Or do you think they decided, I'm going to have a fantastic career. I'm going to succeed in my music career because I am that person. And then they went out and made it happen. They made it possible for them. There's not a single person outside of them that could have told them it's possible for them or not. They had to go out and do the work and show themselves what's possible. So never fall into this trap. Don't ask someone, is this possible? Only you know what's possible for you. So get to work. Try the law out, apply it, and see what happens. Mistake number three. Not being honest with yourself. Manifesting a surface-level desire instead of the essence of your desire. I met someone recently who wants to manifest a big lottery win. They also want to manifest moving overseas once they win the lottery. I said to them, okay, why the lottery win? Why don't you just manifest wealth in whatever form it comes? And also, why wait for the lottery win to move overseas? Why not manifest the perfect opportunity, all expenses paid, to move overseas? There's a million and one opportunities that will allow you to move overseas now instead of waiting for a lottery win. They replied, no, I want it this way. I specifically want the lottery win. And once I have that, I'll move overseas. This is someone who has not taken the time to understand the essence of their desire. Anyone who wants to win the lottery doesn't really understand wealth or abundance. Because if you just stop and think for a moment and take your ego down a notch and get honest with yourself, it becomes very obvious that what you really want is not a lottery win. What you probably want is to have enough money to do what you want to do. That's it. That's a very, very different goal than a lottery win. What you want is to have an abundance of resources, an abundance of money flowing through your life. Why in the world would you limit yourself to just manifesting it in one specific way when the universe can deliver money to you through a million different channels? This is someone who has not gotten honest with themselves. They've not examined why they want what they want. And it's painfully obvious to everyone around them that this person who wants the lottery win isn't ready for true wealth. Because a truly wealthy person isn't thinking about the lottery, I promise you. 
A true millionaire or billionaire is not thinking, I need to manifest the lottery to keep my abundance. So getting honest with yourself. This also applies to the SP crowd, those that want to manifest a specific person. I need this person to love me. I need to manifest this person. Come on, you're not being honest with yourself. What you have here is a very severe attachment to some particular person and a scarcity mindset that this one person is the only person that can fulfill your desire. If you truly got honest with yourself and you said, you know, what I really want is to be loved and to have a stable, caring partner. That intention is honest. That intention is very different than I need this specific person. So people are often not honest with themselves. They're not examining why they want what they want. And they're chasing things that have nothing to do with their life. They're chasing shiny objects that they saw in a movie. And a lottery is the perfect example of that. This person that wants the lottery win so they can move overseas, it's the equivalent of saying, I'm going to fly from New York to Paris, seven hour nonstop flight to pick up a fresh croissant. And then I'm going to fly back and eat my croissant because I want a croissant. I think there's a more efficient way of manifesting a freshly baked croissant that will fulfill your taste buds than chartering a flight from New York to Paris <laughs> to pick up a croissant. But this is what people do with their desires. They over-engineer them. I'm going to win a lottery, and then that'll give me the abundance that I need to move overseas. Meanwhile, there's backpackers with barely a dollar to their name moving overseas all the time. So don't over-engineer your desires. If you want wealth, focus on wealth and abundance, not on lottery wins or getting some mysterious inheritance from some long-lost relative. Maybe it will come that way, but that's not your focus. Your focus is on embodying the thoughts, beliefs, and feelings of a wealthy person, which is very, very different than asking the universe for a random set of numbers on a piece of paper that will grant you access to a lump sum of money. Get honest with yourself. Mistake number four, aborting the process of creation over a minor setback. Manifesting is a long-term game. There's a lot of moving pieces, and the journey is not often a straight line. Neville calls this the bridge of incidents. So, for example, if you're looking for a new career, be prepared that on your way to manifesting a new career, you might get fired from your current position. How you react to that event is everything. If you react to it as, okay, good, I got fired, that must be what needed to happen to move me forward, to move me closer to my ideal career. I'm going to trust, I'm going to have faith, I'm going to continue in the direction of my vision. If you react to it in that way, you're golden. But if you react to it as if it's a major setback, and you freak out, you panic, you're now in the process of aborting your manifestation. You're losing faith in the long-term vision by focusing on a short-term setback. Think of it like this. You're cooking pasta, and you're slicing some tomatoes, and you get a minor cut on your hand. Tiny mistake. If you suddenly freak out over it and you say, that's it, this is BS, I'm not cooking anymore, and you throw everything out, you throw away the pasta, the tomatoes, you throw everything in the sink, and you leave, grumpy, angry. Well, that means there's no pasta for dinner, and you're probably not going to enjoy your evening. But if you say to yourself, oh, okay, I cut myself a little bit here, I burnt myself, that's okay. Let me put a bandage on this, and we keep going. We keep going. Now you're on your way to a delicious pasta dinner. You haven't let a minor setback derail you from your vision. Setbacks happen in life all the time. It's normal. It's like turbulence on a plane. It gets a little bit windy sometimes, and you ride it out. You don't panic. You don't freak out. You don't turn the plane around and say, 
well, we gotta fly another day because this is too windy. You assess the situation, you take whatever action is necessary in the moment to stay centered, and you keep going towards your destination. Like a ship at sea encountering a storm, you don't let the storm sway you. You check your compass and you keep going in the direction of the port, the lighthouse, your destination. You keep going. You ride out the storms and you keep going. Mistake number five. You get caught up in the semantics of manifestation. I see this all the time in the manifestation community. People arguing over law of attraction versus law of assumption. People arguing over different methods and techniques. People arguing about what's possible. This is classic beginner's mistake. Masters don't argue over semantics. They learn to see beyond the language and the words, and they learn to see the essence, the universal truth behind each modality and principle. Who cares if it's the law of attraction or the law of assumption? The real question is, is it bringing you results? If you're still stuck arguing over semantics and definitions, and what did this quote mean by this person who wrote it a hundred years ago, you are wasting your time, my friend. Read everything you can, learn everything you can, study every great teacher, and start applying it to your life as soon as you can. Stop looking for confirmation, evidence, proof, definitions. There's a million and one ways to slice a tomato. So every time you see a different teacher teaching manifestation in their own way, that's all that's happening. It's their own unique way. Same law, different words, different semantics. It's okay. Learn from it what you can, or if you don't resonate with it, pick a different teacher. What matters is how you apply it to your life. Mistake number six. You're not in it for the long haul. A lot of people are using manifestation in quick, short-term bursts. I need this thing, I'm going to manifest it. When I need the next thing, I'm going to manifest that. The master plays a long-term game. They recognize that desires will come and go. And there will always be shiny new things that they want to manifest. The real power comes from working on your mind directly over many, many years. It's not a short-term gain. It's a long-term game. The real prize of manifestation is mastering your mind, mastering your self-concept, mastering your ability to think and feel what you want to think and feel. The greats go after the intangibles. They're not trying to manifest mansions or Lamborghinis or boyfriends or girlfriends. They're going after the big ones, manifesting spiritual peace, spiritual understanding, deeper connection with the divine, deeper understanding of oneself and one's soul and one's purpose here on earth. The master recognizes that by working on the intangibles, the tangibles become easy. By working on the deep, deep work of looking at oneself and up-leveling oneself spiritually, the 3D manifestations sort of take care of themselves. So start to see manifestation as a long-term game of mastering your mind. The shiny objects are good. You'll get them. Don't worry. But tune into the real reason you were given this information. It wasn't to manifest a mansion, I don't think. It wasn't to manifest a free cup of coffee. (laughs) I think there's a far more spiritual reason for learning about the law of assumption or the law of attraction or the laws of creation, which is to work on yourself, work on your mind and work on your soul. Master your mind. That is the real prize. Mistake number seven. You're trying to manifest your way out of having to be courageous. This is a big one. Oh my God, let's get into it. So let me give you an example. We have Jack and we have Jill. Jack and Jill both want to become actors. Now Jill is going to auditions as much as she can. 
She's applying to every job she can. She's doing training at an acting academy. She's putting herself out there. She's getting as much time on stage as she can. She's practicing her craft. She faithfully holds the vision of being an incredible actor, and she's doing everything in her power to manifest that, including taking all the natural action steps that would go along with her vision. Now Jack is taking a different approach. Jack is sitting at home. He wants to become an actor, but he's terrified of being seen. He's never been on stage. He's never gone for an audition. He's never taken an acting class in his life. He doesn't even have professional headshots. But he knows about manifestation. So he has an idea. He says to himself, I'm going to manifest myself being discovered on the streets of New York. An agent is randomly going to see me. They're going to see something in me. And they're going to cast me in the next great movie. And I'm going to visualize that. I'm going to manifest getting myself discovered out on the streets of New York. Now, listening to these two situations, who would you bet on manifesting their dream acting career? Jack or Jill? Now, here's the kicker. Why is Jill more likely to attain her dream? Is it that she's taking more action? That might be part of it, yes, but that's not the most important part. The most important part is that Jill is willing to be courageous. It's scary to get up on stage. It's scary to go to auditions and be rejected over and over and over again. But Jill is willing to face her fears. She might still be using manifestation techniques to hold the vision of who she wants to become and manifest opportunities to get on stage, to get in front of people, to get the auditions. But she's not using manifestation to get out of the scary bits, the bits that make her feel nervous. Jack is scared shitless. He's scared to be seen. He's scared to be on stage. He's scared to try something and fail. And he's trying to use manifestation as a way to get out of doing all this scary stuff. Listen, manifestation works, but it will not work if you try to use it to bypass your fears. The universe doesn't reward that sort of behavior. Courage is an essential part of the manifestation puzzle. The universe will meet you halfway. It'll give you the opportunities, the auditions, the agent, everything you need to become the great actor you want to be. But at the end of the day, you will still have to make the jump and leap into the unknown. You will still have to show up on stage. You will still have to show up in the audition with courage. The universe will meet you halfway, but you have got to make the jump. And this applies to everything, not just acting. The person that wants to manifest the lottery win. They're trying to bypass their fears. They may have a fear of running a business. They might have a fear of taxes. They might have a fear of selling. So they tell themselves, it's okay. I'm just going to manifest the lottery win. That way, I don't have to deal with business. I don't have to deal with customers, sales, taxes. I don't have to grow as a person. I'm just going to manifest a lump sum of money dropping into my lap. From what I've seen personally, the universe does not reward that kind of thinking. The universe loves to meet you halfway, but it will not take away the gift of courage. It will not take away the gift of facing your fears from you. It's a gift. Part of this reality is having courage is leaping into the unknown, having faith and trust and showing up. And the universe will not take that gift away. So it'll help you. It'll meet you halfway. But you've got to make that jump. Whatever you're manifesting, if there's a piece of it that you're afraid of, that's your work. That's the part where you have to jump and say, we are doing this. Even though I'm scared, I trust I believe I'm going to do this. So use manifestation by all means. But remember, courage is required to bring you to that final, final step. 
Courage is required for you to become the new person that you will be on the other side of your manifestation. Meet the universe halfway. Have courage. I hope you enjoyed this free lesson. I hope you learned something from this. If you want to receive 30 more lessons on how reality works and the best tools that I have found when it comes to manifestation, you're going to love my new course, Unlock God Mode. Unlock God Mode is an in-depth reality creation course where I share lessons just like this one on how to practically, effectively create your reality. No fluff, no marketing, just the raw truth of what I learned in my life around manifestation and reality creation and what's worked for me. So if you're curious to learn more about the course, head over to unlockgodmode.xyz or use the link in the show notes. Use the code GRATITUDE for a special limited time discount. Thank you for listening. Thank you for learning with me. If you enjoyed this lesson, send it to one friend who you think might benefit from this information. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much, and may you have a beautiful, beautiful day.